Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. And have you wow. noticed this sick merch? Oh, sick drip. Look how feel, fresh we feel. all look. We've got some merch. It's dropping. It's now. It's, it's now. It's, op- it's dropped all over the floor. Tripplejumpshop.com. Mm-hmm. You can get four, five new merchals. Five. Hang on. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. Pin, Pin of that. Yeah. yeah. Four. Billy Ray plush, five. five. That's it. Yes. That's five. 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 Let's talk people through what they're not seeing if they're listening to the audio version. Yeah, yeah, Can you yeah. describe your shirt, please? I have a very important, I'm gonna make, away from my microphone so you can see it, uh, missing Dead Island 2, the spider. This is like carton. podcast merch. Yeah. yeah, it is. Look at that. Yeah. If you can see it. And if you can't, well, sucks to be you. Head to triplejumpshop.com and you'll see it. Mm. It's a milk carton with Dead Island 2, the spider. He is missing. Yeah. Call we us. We can't find him. He's still not here. Him. No. Yeah. Uh, which is a shame. Yeah. What have you got on? Well, I'm going to have to turn around to show you mine, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, so y- you might have to describe okay. it. Don't forget But that. it's a school leavers hoodie. Mm-hmm. We've got our school crest. Yeah. Triple Jump Towers. Triple Jump Towers, Walrus Clan crest. Yeah. And then on the back. <sighs> yeah. I'm the alumni. Leavers 24. Do you want to read some of these names that you went to school with, Peter? Uh, Not all of them because you have to buy it to really appreciate Claire it. Voyant. Yeah. Holly Day. Yes. Superb. You didn't go to school with her. Anna Logistic. You didn't go to even school with her. her. Yeah. yeah. Millie Peed. Mm. Yeah. You didn't go to school with any of these people. Yes, I did. Stop yeah. lying. Why are you always lying? I mm. wore this hoodie um, in front of my boyfriend and mm. he was like, what have you left? <laughs> what did you leave <laughs> in 2024? And I was like, oh no, it's the Triple Jump merch. He was like, oh, mm. I see. Oh. And that's the one that slowed things down because uh, we it originally it said 23 because yeah. we yeah. designed it last year. Yeah. That was the final hurdle. But then the this initial t-shirt hurdle took so long. Well, yeah. Was the t-shirt I'm wearing, which is a, a take on our new logo shirt, which, uh, you know, from a distance, you can't really tell, but up close, we've used a very clever sort of a dot effect to simulate the glow because when we just put the glow PNG file of our logo it on a shirt, bad. it did not print very well no. at all. Mm. So we were trying to come up with solutions and there was some back and forth yeah. about that design. But this shirt, that shirt, that hoodie, triplejumpshop.com. P- there's, there's also a pin, of that. a pin badge version of the logo, mm-hmm. uh, logo shirt as well. And very excitingly, we don't even have one to show. We've just got the real boy here. Yeah. yeah. Is, uh, you can get a Billy Ray Walrus. I think it's called a plush buddy. Yes. Um, yeah. It's not one of these. It's because, not a beanie baby. Because that would be his actual family and that would be rude. It's like tra- it's his likeness yeah. um, on a plushie rather than, you know, him. Yeah, it's a lovely like felt kind of squishy thing. Imagine two Billy Ray Walrus silhouettes, stitch them together, yeah. fill them with Stuff stuffing, it. give yeah. them to your dog. Don't do that because it might choke on the stuffing yes but it's that kind of thing you'll yeah. see the image online and that's limited tw- uh, 200 of those it's only, only 200. and it's pre-order as well mm. so we'll ship them all when when they're made and when all the orders have been put in but they're a lot like the in fact they're exactly the same as the the cultaholic yes. wrestle buddy if things that they those. did of their mm. of, of the presenters on, yeah. on that channel so yeah, triplejumpshop.com, amazing new it's merch. It's finally happened. We know you've been saving up every penny for months and yeah. months now. You can blow it all. And it's and it's payday this week, so mm-hmm. no, literally time. no excuse. Yeah. yeah. Food, stop it. Bills. What was the payday last forget week? Forget about it. it was Just payday last eat week. your Billy Ray Walrus plush buddy. Buy two hundred of them, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Mm. Triplejumpshop.com. Yeah. It's finally time. Uh, there's a few other places you can find us around the internet. Uh, triple. Oh no, we haven't even done the sponsor, have we? Jesus, I thought we were no, just we going just straight in. No, we just got excited about our merch. It, that sort of is the sponsor, but Ashton, yeah. you do have an additional sponsor. I do. Really, I should have just made it the merch, but mm, yeah. I've come up with something much worse. Merch I mean, been, I've been, been handed old. something yeah. much worse. Mm. I don't really know how they expect me to advertise this. And again, I did not come up with this. You didn't come so up with no this. So no one is allowed to be annoyed by, about it. To me, no, okay? okay. Um, you guys know that Final Fantasy VII Remake came out a little while ago. Yeah. Mm. Well, normally, like, when something is created by a human mm. um, oh, no. and, and made... Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, then normally something else also oh. comes out afterwards, no. too. Ashton, you mustn't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Sorry. Um, so come out now... <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Afterbirth. Afterbirth. <laughs> Lovely. So what happens in this one, please? 
it's it's just the second part of the remake that um, just sort of came out. Yeah, yeah, just kind of came out afterwards. Mm-hmm. Slid out. No, no. <laughs> no. Not, some some people it. eat it. Um, please some don't, people please will, don't eat your copy. Some of people Final will Fantasy dry VII. their their version of Final Fantasy VII Afterbirth, um, and they'll turn it into pills to consume mm. for vitamins. Okay. Um, some people, yeah, rub it on their baby's head. Mm-hmm. Um, Simba for um, to present <laughs> to cot scalp or whatever that weird thing is that happens to babies. Okay, I don't remember what it's called. Cot scalp. Cot scalp. Yeah, it's like when all their skin comes off. Oh. Or where, where all their skin comes <laughs> off. I can't remember what it's called. This is... <laughs> cradle cap, I think is what it's called. Cradle cap. Oh, this is one of the worst things that I didn't we've ever it. had to talk about hey, on this video me. game podcast. Me. No, it wouldn't be you, would it? That's no. what they called... That's what they did. That's, That's what, what Square Enix it. decided to call it for some I'm reason. I'm not going to lie. When I had to do the sponsor last week um, or last time, whenever it was, I was also tempted. I was sent an offer by a Final Fantasy VII Afterbirth. And, and you I said, thought, no. no, I'm going to reject that. Peter I, Austin's I above didn't it. Say no. Ashton Matthews is like, give us the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not real, though. No. Oh. Actually, I came up with it. Oh, so all that stuff you just said about Afterbirth wasn't true. Uh, no, that is true. All of that oh, is true. Okay. Yeah, that, that is true. What a world. Delicious um, placenta. No, we are not sponsored by Final Fantasy VII Afterbirth. We're sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you go there and support us at the lowest tier, you get access to early episodes of Worst and Weirdest Games, exclusive access to episodes of Rules Boss and Main Menu, asking questions on this podcast, tons of other stuff as well. And then we've also got triplejud.mup, which is our website. You can go there and find all the links to the stuff we do. YouTube, Twitch, Discord, if you want a cameo from us. Triplejumpshop.com. Get this sick merch. My wrist just clicked. It's so it excited about, about wearing this t-shirt. And uh, once again, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. A few things out this week, guys. Yes. We've got worst games ever. Deadliest warrior. Whoa. Whoa. Who's the deadliest warrior? I'm down. scared and in danger. Now, Ben, you won't be aware of this. Um, in Deadliest Warrior, well, you'll be aware of this because you were there, but yes. in Deadliest Warrior, I said, oh, this is a bit like the chivalry expansion where you play as different warriors from history. Okay. That chivalry expansion, it turns out, is called Chivalry 2 or Chivalry, whichever one it was, Deadliest Warrior. Oh. And is officially branded to that, but is oh. better than the game we played on Worst Games Ever. Unsurprisingly. Yeah. Also, we probably should have pointed to For Honor as well, which is basically yes, the same thing. Indeed. Yeah. So. Hmm. Also out this week, but only on Patreon, only on is Patreon. an exclusive episode of Rules Boss, mm. where we played Super Mario Wonder. Well, Ben played it. I tried to. But he wasn't allowed to pick up any power ups. Nope. We lost so many lives. Yep. So okay, we bought them back in, we time, did buy for them the, back. in time for the next stream. It was exactly. sorted. So yeah, rule spots available now. Patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Right, it's time, everyone. First question. Yes. It comes from Jens Herman, who says, Hey, oh, Bapperoonies. Tomorrow, at the time of writing, this at the time of writing this, the po- uh, Pokemon Direct will have revealed a whole bunch of exciting stuff about upcoming Pokemans stuff. Are you looking forward to whatever has been revealed? And with you, I mean Ben. Kiss, kiss, and bye. Thank you, Jens. Thank you, Jens. Uh, it was all a bit weird, wasn't it? It was all a bit weird. Mm. Um, weird energy in that in that uh, showcase. I'm not Why able- was the little boy running the Pokemon company? That's what I was confused about. He was so young looking. Yeah. Like president, the COO of the Pokemon company mm-hmm. is like, that man is 12. He's done well for himself. <laughs> How has he done in that? Life. I don't Unbelievable. Know. Nepotism, maybe? Maybe he just won all of Pokemon. Yeah, he's in, he's maybe. the best master card at 11. Player, yeah. And then he, yeah, he yeah, won yeah. it. I mean, my takeaway from it was that it either sort of all looked the same to me as a non Pokemon player, except the ones that didn't. And the ones that didn't were really weird looking. Mm. So mm. it was either, I have no idea what the flip is going on, or. Oh, yeah, that's just more sort of Pokemon. I don't really know what's going on. Cafe Remix looked very odd. Yeah. I, I assume so it being called... A lot called, of them are already out. Yeah, Remix. Yeah. I presume that means there's been a Pokemon Cafe game before, maybe. Probably. I don't know. Don't know. Not done my research. Um, <laughs> didn't pique my interest that much. No, it didn't. Cerulege is a just a Power Ranger. I don't know what... You know, the Pokemon designs now are really <laughs> weird. Phalanx were just little Mario bob I thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's some really strange Pokemon out there now. And cards are now digital. Yeah. I mean, they're still also physical. But, uh, you know, that seems to, if you ask me, take some of the fun away from being a 
trading card player. Mm. Um, I'm sure some people will actually think it's even better that they're digital and you'll get all of the fancy effects and dopamine rush of, uh, you know, the, probably the equivalent of opening a they pack. They took and, great care in showing the pack yeah. and the you, you swipe, swipe across and it goes, sk- it makes yeah. a nice yeah. noise. You yeah. probably get just as much kind of of a dopamine rush out of it digitally. But yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. I like, I just like physical stuff. I like having cards in my hand. Mm. Not Pokemon cards. I've not played those since I was, uh, you know, since the 90s. But um, You want to go to a real cafe run by Pokemon. Exactly. You don't want to remix digital. Ones. I do. Yeah. I want to do real sleep, not video game sleep. <laughs> but oh, wait, Raikou's I coming. Can. Yeah, Raikou, well. Raikou's coming to your bedroom soon. Yeah. Excuse me, what? what? Lock the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Ashton, what did you think? Um, I think that the entire showcase can be summed up by the line, Pikachu in Cap's hat, now available. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? In what game? I'm not sure. Um, I was lost mm. from the get go. Um, they just from the Pokemon Go. From the Pokemon Go, <laughs> they just be doing stuff, mm-hmm. don't they? They're just kind of doing stuff, mm. and no one really knows what they're doing, and no one, I think, really likes what they're doing. Like, I know the chat on YouTube should not be, you know, gospel, but it just kind of is like watching everyone be like. L, L to all of their content, <laughs> Skip. Next. everything. It's like, what are they doing? Interesting. I didn't watch Who it with the it chat on. So I, didn't. I mean, the reaction is the same, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever is on. But, yeah. yeah. I know that like diehard Pokemon Pokemon fans will just like, Pokemon, Pokemon. Um, will just like lap up everything mm. that they do. But sometimes I'm just like, hey guys, maybe we don't need like five apps for Pokemon. Mm. One that tracks your sleep. One that you wander around and do, and now one that you open cards, um, which I do think is weird and did does take a bit out of it. But I suppose you can't get scalped if it's on your phone. Yeah, that's true. And you get true. two free packs a day, which means to me, you have to pay for the other ones. Oh, of course, um, yeah. So... I have a huge respect for the hardcore Pokemon community because yeah. can you really call yourself a fan of something if you haven't elbowed children in the face to get mm. a Van Gogh Absolutely not. From, card from McDonald's or get a so happy meal, hard yeah. that they had mm. to close the exibit for everyone? Yeah, yeah, can you yeah. really call yourself a fan if you've done that? No, I don't no, think you can. You can't. Man. I don't think you can. Um, yeah, when was the last time you really elbowed someone because of something you loved? Oh, I do that oh, all the time, but man. not to get a Van Gogh card, you know. So you just got to keep those elbows sharp, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just for when you're next. It's not, passion it's not because you love someone. Thing. It's just because you hate, I hate every, everything. Everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I I don't really have that much of a relationship with Pokemon. I tried to play Shield. I didn't like it that much. Uh, I got bored and everyone kept killing me, and I just didn't, didn't know what I was doing wrong. Um, but yeah, I guess it was all right. Just kind of random, isn't it? I sat next to Kieran the whole time, and all he was doing was just sighing and being like, mm-hmm. "This thirteen minutes, I'll never get back." Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until the last announcement, the Pokemon Zar, Legends, some Zabra, um, that he was excited about anything. I'd say Kieran, uh, our editor and the editor of this podcast, is uh, far more. An uh, avid follower of modern Pokemon than I am. A like I'll, I try to sorry, a pokey head. A pokey head. Yeah, he was it. He was in the throngs, the masses at the Louvre. Like, get out of the yeah, way, yeah. kids! Yeah. <laughs> you should see his desk. He's got piles of those Van Gogh cards. Yeah, he has mm-hmm. yeah. piles. Showed them. Um, so he like I, I try to keep up with the modern stuff as and when I can, like the big releases. Like I played Scarlet yeah. and and I I did finish it and I enjoyed it. it. Was one of my games of the year, even though it ran like crap. Couldn't really get into Arceus or Arceus and and so on and so forth. But he he's played a lot more of those. This Pokemon Direct felt a lot more like a, a lot of announcements for free to play mobile games that already existed or sort of like seasonal events for games that already, yeah. already mm-hmm. existed as well. The only really original stuff is the guys uh, is the stuff that you guys have talked about. I was actually sort of interested in the Pokemon trading card uh it's, it's called Pokemon Trading Card Game Pocket. Is its full catchy, catchy name? Catchy name. Mm. I don't think it has a specific release date yet. You do get two free packs a day, as you said, and it seems to be just focusing on the original 151, which is the only reason oh. I was interested. Okay, well, I was just about to say, I prob- I maybe would be interested, except I just feel so out of touch with Pokemon yeah. now that I have no interest in anything to do with the brand. And that's why I didn't play Pokemon Snap 2, because I loved Pokemon Snap 1, mm-hmm. but I thought, I don't know what any of these things are. <laughs> I don't care anymore. Yeah. But... 
If it is just the 151, then maybe I would I have a look. I was paying as close attention as I d- could be expected yeah. to mm-hmm. for, for the quality of the rest of the showcase. And some people may have loved it. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, but I thought that it was only the original 151. If it was the other ones in there as well, I wouldn't care. And I would imagine they would add later generations yeah, I'm sure as well. Yeah, they would eventually. But it... D- I will not spend any money on this, mm. but the idea of just getting a, a thing go bloop on my phone, it's like, you've got a free pack to open. I'm like, go on then. What have we got? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a rat attack. Part of me mm. thinks I would like that purely out of the satisfaction of like. As long as you don't spend any stuff. money on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's just the original 151, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. And you can battle your friend. Probably won't do that. I completed my Pokemon card collection and I still think I, I've only had one battle in my entire life and I don't think we did it properly. I think at the height of the craze, on, like I remember every lunchtime at school, people would you know get their cards out, they'd be swapping and everything. I never saw anyone ever battle their Pokemon. No. Pokemon. Because they, they're too it, precious. Yeah, it was just about like, what have you got? Oh, that's interesting. I want one of those. Mm-hmm. Here, I'll swap you this. Mm-hmm. And that was the fun of it. You can trade in this game as well. You're you able can. to trade mm-hmm. cards with people. Did it? Did they imply mm-hmm. that you could just like send a card to someone driving by on the bus? That's what it looked like. That's what it looked like. That someone, like someone, went, someone might be nearby. Off their phone and it fluttered yeah, off. Yeah, and, and then someone was like... <gasps> Oh, the boss gave me a card. I've got a bee drill. A fantastic. Yeah. Given me. Uh, so I might, I might check that out just out of curiosity. But mm-hmm. I, you know, that's about it. The other thing, yes, Pokemon Legends Z A. It said it will be releasing simultaneously, so there'll be two versions, mm-hmm. predictably. I would assume. I don't know if it's Pokemon Z and Pokemon A. I don't know. Um, they're running out of names, but that's not the point. Yeah. Basically, the trailer was just like it looked like Midgar. The shape of the it city. It did look like, like Midgar. They, they, it was showing like a, a futuristic utopia where Pokemon and humans could live side by side. And, it's and Detective Pikachu movie. Yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, mm. and uh, I think it's like Lumiosa City is what it's called. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a return. It, it, we've been there before, I think, in previous. Oh, previous. Have we? Kira okay. was saying yeah. I think it's X and Y. It's it's right. like an so extra naming, one from them. The naming convention. Yeah, because he was sense. saying that normally you'll get like. X and Y, and then you would have also got Z as mm-hmm. well, or Z. Right. But you know, it never Z never came out. So he thinks, he thinks that Z slash A is the like the spin off of X, Y. Yeah. Okay. And then they'll make B and C, and then D and E. Yeah. Jesus. And we'll keep going round and round forever. I can't be asked with that, uh, to be honest. But uh, yeah, we don't know anything more about that apart from the fact it's releasing in 2025. Some people are suggesting maybe it's a Switch 2 launch title. Mm. Don't know. Don't really know much more. It was a really short showcase, only about 12 minutes. But yes, the only thing that stood out to me was, oh, I can get some free digital trading cards. Mm-hmm. And also... <laughs> Lots of DLC for games that I'm not interested in, like mm. the legendary dogs coming to yeah. Pokemon Sleep, <laughs> which they advertise these things in like the craziest live action way. Yeah. There's there's a man in presumably his early 20s living in his apartment who goes to sleep with a Pikachu on his bed. And then he wakes up and there's a legendary dog and he goes, like, oh, oh. And it's like, <laughs> what, what is this dramatization? If I, I woke understand. up and there was a big scary dog on my bed, I would think I was about to die. What if it was legendary, though? Even worse. It'd yeah. kill me even quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it would. Be. Full of thunder and stuff. Yeah. You know, all that. So a bit of a weird one. Uh, maybe not the target audience, but also if the, I mean, if the chat's to be believed, which it can't be, no. then maybe a bit underwhelming as well. Anyway, we've got a major Pokemon title to look forward to, mm-hmm. which, you know, was always going to be the case, but there we are. Now yeah. we know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, it's time for a segment now. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. okay. That I kind of dreamt up last night. Um, you didn't and tell us about this. No, no, no. Well, I just thought we'd just try it. and then It better not be anything to do with Afterbirth. I'll be really Nothing, nothing, right. nothing. Okay. Um, it's called What We Play In. Oh. I don't like the name. Maybe we can change that. Oh. It's What We Play In time. Time to talk about the games, what we have been playing. Peter, what have we been playing? You. You. Me. <laughs> Did my weekly jackbox on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. You jacked off? I'm just, yeah, jacked off. I'm like the most popular guy in the family now. Like, oh my God. I provided You're this. the gateway to entertainment. Yeah, everyone's having a great time. I bought a new pack. 
Um, what pack did you buy? I bought the one. It's called like Party Starter or something. Right. Oh, does that have like some of the best games? It has yeah, three yeah, yeah. really good games in it. It's got Murder Trivia, pa- Trivia Murder Party, Murder yeah. Trivia Party yeah. Two, the sequel, oh, uh, okay. which I've not, I've not, we've not played it yet, but I've played the first one and I, it's basically just the same with more yeah. stuff. Mm. Um, and then it's got Quiplash, Quiplash, I think, and T uh, TKO. TKO is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a good little. It's only a small one, but it's cheaper than buying like a bigger pack for and, like one game yeah and those are like three good games so mm-hmm. but the main thing i've been playing solo this week the only thing i've been playing solo this week is tomb raider mm. um and i've been re- god for a game that is like you know at times very stressful you'll walk into a room and i'll go you know bears will get you or whatever gorillas um I'm finding that like really zen, really mm. like chilled out. You know, you mostly just it's in a way it's quite a I don't want to say lonely game because that's kind of have, that kind of has negative connotations, but it's you know, you you're usually in a fairly desolate place. There's no one wandering around talking to you. You're just doing some some climbing, working things out. I guess it's quite a mindful game in a way. And the soundtrack when it's not going da 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 da, da is really nice mm. and uh i am familiar with tomb raiders one and three i had them both on pc when i was younger played three mostly i didn't play a lot of one at all um so i i'm i, I kind of know roughly what i'm doing i'm also i'm playing on original controls i'm very comfortable with tank tank controls like i know they are more cumbersome it does take you longer to move around but i don't find them irritating whereas i know some people do and they just think that a game with tank controls is unplayable better or worse than code veronica uh, better. Okay. I was thinking that exact same thing. Yeah. Because um, those, those are some stressful tank controls. Mm. Yeah. You can, obviously, you can turn on the spot. You can do, do a backwards jump and turn in the air. And you can sidestep. And, yeah, it's it's okay. Um, but uh, I did briefly try the modern controls. And, yeah, you can't do a backwards jump, which is required for some of the, like, secret areas. Mm. So that seems like an oversight, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I'm just having a really good time with that. I've killed me dinosaurs, T-Rex. I've been to the Colosseum and where there were literally about 20 gorillas. Um, oh. Killed them all. Um, good? Yeah. Good. Question mark? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Good for Jane nature, Jane Goodall though? wouldn't be thrilled. No, yeah. Jane, Jane would be very cross, yeah. but fortunately she doesn't need to know. Um, she might be dead now as well. Is Jane Goodall dead? Now? I think she might be still alive. I think she might be still alive. Okay, I'm going to double yeah. check because she's a legend. I'm just yeah, she is. I'll be yeah. sad yeah. if I suddenly. Legend, legend in the gorilla community. Yeah, they'd love her. Was she though. not more of a, a chimp lady? Nah, it's mm. all the same, isn't it? I can't remember. Ape. Ape. Mm. Yeah. Jane Goodall. She is 89 years old. She's good alive. Her. It's all good, everyone. Jane's still with us. She's alive. We love Jane. Fantastic. We do I love apologize Jane. to Jane. Now, why? Yeah, for oh, for killing the monkeys. gorillas. Yes. Okay. You, well, you apologize for saying she was dead. I didn't say she was she dead. I asked. If I asked. If she, <laughs> she is reaching the age where her mortality is, is in is, question. Is pending. Yeah. yeah so I'm just. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, Jane's fine. The, the gorillas are aren't. Not right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not okay. And I'm having a really nice time um, with it. Uh, I'm still on Tomb Raider 1, but I'm nearly done, I think. And I saw someone tweet yesterday saying, I have now spent as much time on Tomb Raider 2 as I spent on Tomb Raider 1. And I think I'm only a third of the way through. I forgot how big these games were. So mm. th- maybe I'm starting to feel slightly daunted about doing all three. But whatever. Hey, maybe that guy was just bad at games. Maybe. Maybe it's just rubbish. Yeah. You're well good at games. You're well good at You locked games. him in the freezer yet, that boy? No, because he's not in the first one. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, not yet. But, but you've got to at least do that. Yeah, yeah I will do. That. He's killed yeah. an in- the entire band gorillas. So Maybe then you can the apologize step. to all butlers yeah. as well once you've yeah. done that. Can't wait. Ashton, what have you been playing? I've only played one thing this week, but guess what? I've what? finally done it. i finally finished Baldur's <laughs> Gate 3. Yes! Um, Congratulations. It was, g- I loved it. It was great. The end is a little bit, the epilogue is a bit weird. Um, you, thought, you thought it was weird? Yeah, well, because we're playing in two player. Oh, okay. Um, Obviously, if you've got a relationship with one of the characters and and you like survive the kind of big boss, um, that you have a little romantic moment. But like we both have to just sit through each other's weird moment, and then oh. it ends the same way. You both like walk out hand in hand of the room really awkwardly. And I think if we'd just done it once, it's like 
oh, that's nice. But it happened twice with two different characters. Uh, um, and then there's like a camp thing uh, where you get to hang out with all your pals. And that was nice. Yeah, um, that was the bit I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the romance bit happens just between those two yeah, bits. See, I didn't have any. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no one wanted yeah. to sleep with my characters. So. Um, yeah, but I really, I did really enjoy that. Um, I, do you know what I love in video games? And it always gives me like a good, a big gold grin on my face. When... Everyone who you've hung out with during the game who is on your side comes together and like for the final battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved it in Horizon. I love it in this. It's good in Mass Effect. It's good in Mass Effect. Like I just love it when it's like, oh my, all my pals. All the friends you made along the way. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool about Baldur's Gate is that whoever you end up getting in this final fight, you can like call them in in the battle at the end and like have people just like peppering them with shots or bringing in a big owl bear if you've befriended it and um every time one of those people died we were like no unnamed stranger you were so good <laughs> um yeah there was a few things like the, the kind of were unresolved like towards the end the characters might send you letters to be like you know, thanks so much here's what i've been up to but there was like a bunch of characters that like i thought were relatively significant that just like never sent us a letter or like didn't appear at the end and mm. i was like well hope they're doing all right i guess and then i'm like trying to figure out like who is this character that sent me a letter like <laughs> who are you mm. um but yeah that game is great and i had a wonderful time with that game mm. and i'm glad that i finished it just in time for final fantasy 7 rebirth mm. yes, to come that's out what it's called, yes. so i can focus on that but yeah what a great what a great game mm. i know why everyone loved it and um yeah i think the final fight was actually surprisingly it wasn't too, Easy. wasn't too bad. Was no, it? Yeah. but it was maybe that's because I was my characters were like beefed out to hell. But. At that point for me, it felt like a mercy because I was like, I've got to be near the end of this game. Yeah. Please, please, can it end yeah, now? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, this is it. And it's actually all right. Yeah. I know how to do this one. It's, yeah. it's not too bad. Okay, cool. But yeah, that's what that's the only thing I've played this week. Excellent. Well, I have played a couple of things. I played some more Far Cry 5 and co-op. I'm still just like, <sighs> about it but it's pretty <laughs> fun in co-op mm-hmm. you've yeah. got the three sections of the map where the where um adam cole baby his his like mates are all running this mm-hmm. place and you've got to get resistance points by doing side missions and missions and stuff in that area mm-hmm. and filling up a bar and i assume when you fill the bar you can then tackle that person who's in that area but god the bar feels so slowly and i'm just like okay i'm gonna fast travel here and this man wants me to run around and do a shooting range. And I got 10 points for that. And oh, there's a hostage on the side of the road. I'll rescue them. And and it's just, I just want to do the story bit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be mucking about, wasting time, desperately searching for boring side stuff to do. So I don't know if I'll finish it, but I've I've played a little bit of it and it's it's still daft as hell. I'm wearing a t-shirt with a unicorn on it. And that's great. Cool. So I'm enjoying that. I played a few rounds of Helldivers 2, that game's still really fun. There was a really funny um, headline I saw that IGN put out where clearly they've got this uh, campaign going at the moment on one of the planets because they brought in the automatons or the robot things. And uh, I can't remember the specific wording, but it was something like Helldivers 2 players lament um, their video game Vietnam as the player base loses this planet to the robots because mm-hmm. apparently the it was just bonkers hard. Like it, you would drop in and because it's... That that's like in in other games that would be maybe poorly balanced or you know frustrating, but I think that's just part of the fun because mm. you know you you're playing these sort of ragdoll men who throw themselves off cliffs and you know it's all for democracy and freedom, and then you just <laughs> you've just got like thousands of robots coming in unending waves and and yeah the player base collectively lost that planet. I saw a yeah. uh, I saw a headline this morning that said there's someone on the dev team whose official job title is something like game master and Mm. he gets up in the middle of the night to send in more enemy reinforcements apparently into the battlefield yeah it's really good i like how he's got a big red button next to his Mm -hmm. bed where he's like more yeah hits the more robots more robots uh so i I played that i managed to call in an airstrike and get a trophy because i killed 25 enemies with one airstrike and that was pretty cool i was like i always miss with these airstrikes because the enemies always move by the time i do it and Mm -hmm. i've got the most basic rubbish airstrike not like a carpet bomb or something and i saw them all grouped there and i was like i'm gonna call this in 
and I called it in. And then I got hit with a rocket in the back of the head and I just exploded. And I was like, cool. All right. Well, never mind then. Uh, but that was that was really fun. That's a great game. I look forward to dedicating some more time to it. But unfortunately, I haven't had much time for Helldivers 2 over the past couple of Why, weeks since ben? it came out. Because I've been playing Final Fantasy 7 after Rebirth. Oh. Yeah. I've been playing it nonstop. Uh, we're about to do a review corner on it where I'll talk in more detail. But there's a couple of things I forgot to mention. One is that it's gloriously campy. It's Love so, that. so camp, much like the first game. Yeah. There are moments in this where you're like, that man is really flexing. He is going for it, and we are seeing some of the most messed up camera angles of this man flexing his muscles that you could possibly imagine. I mm-hmm. still think about the moment from the demo where Sephiroth and Cloud are doing like a synergy move together, Yes, and it just ever so quickly, like for a second, just cuts to Sephiroth like, swing and like <laughs> just posing and almost like winking at the camera. And it just, oh my God, it like had me in hysterics. It's a it really so funny. funny game as well. Yeah. Like, there's moments in it that are genuinely funny. And a lot of it does come from just the over the top campaign. Yeah. You've seen in the demo as well, when you meet uh, Tifa's trainer, the one in the in the town, and he's like shaking your hand. And he, while he's talking, he's just going, Whoa! Yeah. and just like, just tensing <laughs> yeah. all his muscle. It's so stupid. Um, another thing I would recommend for people is for some reason, by default, the navigation system is like a compass at the top of the screen. Right. But because it's open world, that's not very useful because things can be thousands of meters away. Mm. So you can actually go into the settings and change it to a mini map rather than a compass. I would recommend you do that straight away because it just makes navigating things like towns much easier when mm. there's lots of winding streets. Mm. You know where you're going rather than the direction you're meant to be going. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, but that's all I've played. Shall I tell you more about it in that review corner over there? Yes, please. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Review Corner. Hello, Ben. Hello. You are talking to us about a game that I don't think anyone's really been talking about, really what low-key. Even is it? No one's really been mentioning uh, it. What? What is it? This is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh, yeah. And it's out now. Whoa. Unbelievable. It's out now on PlayStation 5. Before we go any further, big thank you to Square Enix for supplying mm-hmm. us with a review code for this game. Hit him uh, with it. Per ASA guidelines, this is now technically classified as an ad. However, there was no financial compensation in exchange for coverage. We're just covering it because we got a code Mm -hmm. and that's it. We Mm -hmm. say it every time, but we've got to. Apparently, I don't think anyone else says it, but we were warned that (laughs) maybe we should cover our asses. So we're going to continue to do it. Yes, I have been playing this now for about a week or so. I'm about 35 hours in. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I've made it very far, (laughs) which is kind of bonkers. Uh, The game continues where the last one left off so obviously remake came out in 2020 this is rebirth the second part of the planned trilogy of remake of Mm -hmm. final fantasy 7 you have escaped the city of midgar and you and the gang are now on the hunt for sephiroth in this open world trying to track him from sort of like town to town you've Mm -hmm. got these weird like blokes in hoods and like where are they going there's something to do with them let's go track them down Mm -hmm. so game kicks off with the demo if you played that i know a lot of people have yeah Uh, with you guys sort of reminiscing about some of uh, Cloud's past and his dealings with Sephiroth. And then it just sort of goes, right, go do it. Go do a Final Fantasy, because this one is open world, in inverted commas, Mm -hmm. as opposed to the last one, which was very linear. Yeah. Because it's got the same sort of chapter structure that the last one did, the the sort of the basic way that it's laid out is that there will be sort of like a, a more linear story focused chapter and then there'll be a more open section. So it's open world in the sense that, yes, the whole world is interconnected, but you won't have access to the whole open world immediately. Right. And there will be various ways that you can travel between these zones. But mm-hmm. each zone is pretty massive. So you'll have a linear story. A chapter that'll be in a particular town and then you'll leave that town and it'll be like here's a massive bit of open world for you to explore with tons of side stuff to do your main quest objective is on the other side of it you can go there now if you want or you can muck about and do loads yeah. of side stuff so this is the big departure really from the first one and there is a lot of side stuff in this game okay it's not gonna be for everyone is my concern Chadley from the first game. That little boy. The little boy. The robot boy. Yeah. Yeah. Who I found kind of annoying. Yeah. He's like the harbinger of guff in this game. (laughs) If you found him irritating before, 
every time he calls you, you're going to be like, it's bloody Chadley again. <laughs> and he wants me to do some more side stuff. Flip off Chadley. He's just sort of been made the side stuff guy. Right. So he explains all these all these things to you. Your mileage with the side stuff will will vary massively. But just as like to, to give you an idea of the kind of side stuff you will do, and there's bloody loads of it. Mm. There's obviously side missions that vary in quality. Mm -hmm. uh, you can... In classic Ubisoft fashion, climb towers cool. to reveal local areas, uh, points of interest. Cool. Uh, you can tame the local chocobo because chocobos is how you get around most mm -hmm. of the time. Uh, there are chocobo stops, which act as fast travel points. And all you need to do to those is just hold down triangle to lift up like a bus stop. So, right. And then you can use it as a fast travel thing. Uh, there's combat assignments where you fulfill certain criteria like stagger this enemy in this fight and defeat it in the time limit mm -hmm. there's uh summon crystals where you just do sort of like a quick time mini game thing okay. uh, life springs which is very similar in each area there's like a proto relic is what it's called where you get sort of sent around the map to do a more story driven like bit of trying to track down this proto relic and it's all kind of it varies uh, mm. from from area to area what you're actually up to and then of course there's the queen's blood card game which they added oh yes the it's card a whole game. card game yeah which there is an element of skill to yeah. and i am much better at it now after a lot of trial and error but it it is an awful lot of rng it's about what the ai what card the ai plays mm -hmm. and you know pretty early on if you're if you're buggered basically right. but fortunately during the course of the any game of, uh, of of queen's blood you can pause it and restart it and it's nice and simple okay. that's for me is is bad this is the part of rebirth that i don't like right. and i want to get out of the way early because I think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is excellent so far. Yeah. I really, really like it. When it's just being Final Fantasy VII, yeah. it's phenomenal. And they had to find stuff to fill the open world with. There's just a lot of it, and it's not very interesting. It kind of feels like they threw everything at the wall, saw what sticks, and everything stuck. And it feels like, like nothing got cut from yeah. this game, okay. uh, for better or worse. And if you love Final Fantasy, like really love it, and yeah. you love this game, and you just want to exist in it for as long as possible, brilliant mm -hmm. just know that as i said your mileage with the side stuff is going to vary massively yeah. in my personal opinion anyway so is, are they in every section of open world so are the open world like like you were saying you mm -hmm. have a little bit of a linear story and then there's an open world and that carries on to the next story can you return to that open world at a later date yes they they make a point of saying that you will not be able to come back to this area right. for a while, but you, you can eventually. come back at any like if you if you you don't have to do everything straight away. Okay. You can always come back. Yeah. And there's goblin brain, right, that yeah. says, go on, tick all the boxes before you go on. Yeah. Tick all the But what happens then, at least what happened for me when my goblin brain kicked in, mm -hmm. was that I did a really exciting story mission and then the pace came to a grinding halt mm -hmm. as I spent five hours climbing towers. It's like <laughs> that's no, yeah. I needed to. I needed to like snap out of that mindset. So later on, I did just like do some stuff as I made my way through, mm. and then I'll come back and clean it up later if I can be bothered. I'm trying to have a a more positive relationship with games where yes. I don't feel like I have to do everything as I go. Yeah. But there is so much stuff in here, and a lot of it is not very interesting. Okay. So fair warning. Okay. But as I said, when it's being Final Fantasy VII, it's brilliant. The visuals, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. There are still some strange texture issues. This wouldn't have been the the case with the uh, the integrated version you played on PS5, mm -hmm. but the original version on PS4. Sometimes you'd just come across a texture that was like really blurry, and it was like, "Oh yes, I do what remember is, this." Yeah, what, how is that? That is still happening. Okay. I understand there may be a day one patch that fixes a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It runs great as well. I'm playing in performance mode. The music, phenomenal. The way that certain areas have been adapted. Again, trying to keep it very spoiler free. <laughs> that you know previously were just like. Here's a JPEG backdrop with two huts. Yeah. Now they're like full bustling towns with NPCs talking about like lore that's been expanded upon. Cool. Obviously they've added new characters and new story threads and existing side characters have been massively expanded upon. It does all that stuff so, so well. They've added some other stuff as well. Okay. So we've also got some some more combat things, the synergy skills and abilities that you will have seen some of yeah, in the demo. I didn't love those. Okay. I found like I couldn't find them a lot of the time. Like I, I wasn't sure how to get there because there's so many menus and different, like L1 and L1 did different things. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking I was doing a synergy thing, but actually it was a, like a similar duo attack thing that's yeah. under a different 
a section. But I only got to do it once, to be fair, in the demo. So maybe the more I play, the more I'll get into it. But So they've got their own section on the menu. Yeah. And when you press X to like start navigating that stuff, it does slow the combat right yes, down. And yeah. this combat still looks great, plays great, really fast, mm -hmm. very flashy, as everyone knows from the demo. Um, and these synergy skills will be depending on who you've got in your party. Mm -hmm. And to unlock more of these, you have to spend your SP on folios, which is what they've called them this time. Okay. So previously, you know, you would upgrade your weapons in the last one. You yeah. choose like little things like plus 100 HP. Yeah. More fire damage. Yeah. It's that, but they've just changed it. Okay. So you do that, but it's sort of like a, it's a skill tree, but it's shaped a bit like a web. So you can go up different branches, but as the further you go up, the more expensive the skills are. Mm -hmm. And it does vary from, it ranges from, from things like plus 200 HP, to things like uh, the synergy skills and abilities. And also what they've added for this one as well is non-MP costing and, and non-materia requiring like elemental skills. Okay. So normally if you want to do a fire spell, you have to have the fire materia yeah. equipped. And the, the like subsequent amount of MP to, to use cast it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas in this one, when you level up to a certain point, it will be less powerful. But if an enemy's weak to electricity, for example, you could fire off your free electrical ability I see. that doesn't okay. require the, the the material. So that's they've added a couple of things there to to shake that stuff up too. You were concerned mm -hmm. that your party members would feel sad if you left them behind. Yes. You don't need to be concerned. Yes. So your party is always with you. Story dependent, obviously. It will change who's in your party depending yeah, on what's going on. But when you're actually out in the open world and you get on your chocobo, they will all be with you on chocobos. Yay. And it's only when you get into combat that the people who are actually in your combat party with you will step forwards. But you can still see the others in the in the distance sometimes. <laughs> So if Barrett <laughs> is like in the distance, he'll be firing his gun. I don't think he's actually doing any damage, yeah. but like they're present. He's at not all just times. standing there going, "Good job, guys! Woo, you can do it! Yeah, are you dead? Watch out!" So you don't need to be concerned about okay, people being that's upset good. at you. However, there is a way that you can upset people. No, because when you reach certain points in towns, there are whether it be like story side missions or just chatting to them. Mm. They've got like a little smiley face above their head, which is how they feel about you. Right. It's a bit Persona-esque. Yeah. So you'll talk to them and they'll say something like, ah, oh, having a bit of a conundrum about this. What do you think? And you'll have three options and it'll be be an ass, yep. not be interested, or be nice. Yeah. And if you be nice, they'll go, that was nice of you to say that. <laughs> and it'll go, bling. Lovely. Right. Have they changed the story significantly that you've noticed so far? Or is it still relatively following the same strokes as the original? It's definitely following the same strokes as the original. Mm. But it's it's still peppering in question marks. Like, oh, right. is something... Like, I haven't reached the major points where, th where people think... Where things might change. Yeah, where yeah. people think things uh, might change. So I, I haven't quite gotten there yet. But it is still like a really tantal tantalizing look at the, the future. Like, mm -hmm. where are they going to go with the next one? Yeah. I'm still not sure quite how much of the original game is going to be in this one. Yeah. So it's a it's a big game. Okay. And it's it's gorgeous. The music's great. If you liked Remake, you're going to love this one. My advice would be to try to limit how much of the side stuff you dive into immediately. Okay. Because you leave that first town after doing story stuff, it can really slow things down. Mm -hmm. So your mileage will vary. Okay. But it's a brilliant game and I'm very excited that it's out and I'm excited that everybody gets to play it as well. So Good. Well, thanks, Ben. Should we head over to find out what's coming out in March in this month's March forecast? Yes. March is upon us. And even though I am very sure we're all very busy sinking our teeth into everything that came out last month, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, <laughs> there is still even more coming out in the next 31 days. And though we don't have time for them all right now, I thought I'd let you know about a few of the big hitters launching very soon. Starring Stranger Things' as David Harbour and Killing Eve's Jodie Comer, the retelling of 1992's Alone in the Dark is due to hit Xbox, PlayStation and PC on March 20th. 
The survival horror game follows Emily Hartwood and Edward Carnby as they visit the Dissetto Manor to look for Emily's uncle Jeremy. The third person gameplay looks reminiscent of the more recent Resident Evil remakes with a suitable selection of spooky monsters to shoot at or run away from at a full sprint. Fans of the survival horror genre and or the Alone in the Dark series should give this one a look later on in the month. Now, despite its director implying that every game with fast travel is boring, hopefully this mammoth game won't be, when Dragon's Dogma 2 launches on PlayStation 5, PC and Xbox Series. Pick one of 10 classes and explore the world as the Arisen, a hero marked by a dragon who finds himself caught up in the fight between two kingdoms. Call on pawns NPCs, to help fight, give you the goss on the enemies, or offer guidance as you venture on your quest to slay the dragon. The open world map is apparently four times larger than the first game and does include the definitely not fast travel but similar ox carts from the original to help you get around. Dragon's Dogma 2 launches on March 22nd. Also launching on March 22nd is a Super Mario spin-off centered around the most important gal in the Mushroom Kingdom, Princess Peach Showtime. Peach and her pals head to the Sparkle Theatre when the terrible grape and the sour bunch, which is a great band name by the way, turn up to mess things up so awfully that it's up to Peach and the theatre guardian Stella to save the play. As you side scroll through various scenes of the play, Peach transforms and gains new abilities to help her fight off the sour bunch and save the day. The game launches exclusively on Switch. Hold on, another game releasing on the same day? That can't be right. Are they trying to kill us? Nope, yep, I have double checked. Rise of the Ronin is also launching on March 22nd. Jesus. Rise of Ronin is another open world RPG coming out this month, only this one is set in 19th century Japan and follows a samurai known as a Veiled Edge, as they battle through the chaos of a Japan under the rule of Western colonialists. From the creators of Ninja Gaiden, we can expect some pretty masterful combat, and from the clips we've seen, the traversal is also going to be a lot of fun. Rise of Ronin launches exclusively on PlayStation 5. The last game I'd like to bring to your attention is thankfully not coming out on March 22nd, and is, of course, South Park Snow Day. Diving back into the world of South Park with up to three friends, should you wish, has you playing through the most magical day in a child's life, a snow day, in a new 3D environment. Your new kid will battle through the frozen town with melee or ranged combat, and for fans of the TV show, it will hopefully be as successful a video game spin-off as the Stick of Truth. South Park Snow Day launches on PlayStation 5, Switch, Xbox Series and PC on March 26th. Of course, that isn't everything. We have WWE 2K24 on the 8th, Lin's Fanga the Time Shift Warrior on March 13th, and Prison Architect 2 on the 26th, plus a bunch of other smaller titles. But for now, it's time to get back to the podcast. It's time now for question two. Wasn't that just a lot of me in a row? You're welcome. Uh. Um, <laughs> Nexus Polaris says, Hey, Peter, Ashton, Ben. Nintendo is going after Yuzu for emulation piracy. What do you think the ramifications and consequences for this will be? Kiss, kiss. Nexi. Kiss, kiss. Should I tell you what's going on? Yes, please. Go on, then. This comes from Polygon by Nicole Carpenter. They'll be in the link dump, I'm sure. Um, Nintendo is suing the makers of Yuzu, an open source N Nintendo Switch emulator, according to a lawsuit filed in Rhode Island, Rhode Island court on Monday. Gamefile reporter Stephen Totillo first reported the suit. Um, the 41-page lawsuit was filed against Tropic Haze, the company that makes Yuzu. Nintendo also specifically references a person aliased as Bunny, who leads development on Yuzu. Yuzu is a free emulator that was released in 2018, months after Nintendo Switch originally launched. The same folks who made Citra, a Nintendo 3DS emulator made this one basically it's a piece of software that lets people play nintendo switch games on pc linux and android dev devices it also runs on steam deck which valve showed then wiped in a steam deck video clip whoops Emulators aren't necessarily illegal, but pirating games to play on them is. But Nintendo said in its lawsuit that there's no legal way to use Yuzu. Nintendo argued that Yuzu executes codes that defeat Nintendo's security measures, including decryption using an illegally obtained copy of prod keys. Mm. In other words, without Yuzu's decryption of Nintendo's encryption, 
the unauthorized copies of games could not be played on PCs or Android devices, Nintendo wrote in the lawsuit. As to the alleged damages created by Yuzu, Nintendo points out that the release of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom um, leaked almost two weeks earlier than the game's May, tw- May 12th release date. The pirated version of the game qu- spread quickly. Nintendo said it was downloaded more than one million times before the Tears of the Kingdom's release date. People used Yuzu to play the game. Nintendo said that more twenty percent of download links pointed to Yuzu. Though Yuzu doesn't give out doesn't give out pirated copies, Nintendo repeatedly said that most ROM sites point people towards Yuzu to play whatever games they've downloaded. Nintendo said it's expended significant resources to stop the illegal copying, marketing, sale, and distribution of its Nintendo Switch games. It says that Yuzu earns the. T- Yuzu earns the team $30,000 per month on its Patreon from more than 7,000 patrons. Wow. Nintendo said the company has earned at least $50,000 in paid Yuzu downloads. Nintendo, Nintendo said that Yuzu's Patreon doubled its paid members in the period between May 1st and May 12th when Tears of the Kingdom was released. Nintendo is asking the court to shut down the emulator and asking for damages. I am shutting your butt but down. down. Once again, Nintendo asking for damages mm. from something that makes thirty thirty thousand dollars a month. Skip ahead to the end of that article because there yeah. was a really interesting bit that's sort of like d- d- I, I'm, I'm in disbelief at this sentence, but I'll read the whole paragraph. Mm-hmm. Nintendo's won several lawsuits targeting pirate game sites like ROM Universe, where it was awarded more than two million dollars in damages. Nintendo also that's Doug not- Bowser's thing, isn't it? Yes, Nintendo also notorious, or maybe not. It Greg goes Bowser. On to say, Greg Bowser. Our Bowser man. No, no, that is Nintendo also notoriously went after alleged Nintendo Switch hacker named Gary Bowser, Gary Bowser. who was arrested and charged for selling Switch hacks. Though he's been released from prison, Bowser still owes Nintendo $10 million. He paid Nintendo $175 while in prison for money he earned working in the prison library and he has to pay. He's odd to pay $50 a month, yeah. and he's already defaulted on a payment because he came out of prison. And it's unbelievable. Doesn't, can't pay yeah. his it's, money. It's, I don't know how that's okay. No. It no. Does, it's not okay. No. no. He broke the law, but that's so messed up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, just beyond his means. I don't, I don't understand why. Uh, I don't. I'm not even going to go in terms of. T- t- I'm, I have no idea what I'm talking about here. But like, surely if he is just bankrupt, yeah. anything he owes is is no longer. Isn't that sort of what bankruptcy is? It's such a comical kind of amount of money to stuff. owe as well. Like just yeah. just point proven. All right, he went to prison. Yeah, and and I imagine. He paid you all the money he earned from working in the library and kitchen mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you do not make a lot of money in prison no. at all. No. And and that's just like, okay, stop. You yeah. you look like the villains here. Yeah. yeah. I'm just surprised someone can continue to owe 10 million when they have literally nothing. Zero. Yeah. 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 Um, but essentially how Yuzu works is that there was a bit of hardware in switches in that were made before 2018 that allowed for things to be in like encrypted and decrypted and that's how yuzu works that bit of hardware could not be patched by you know a software update so basically left the nintendo switch vulnerable and yuzu works off of this bit of soft- this hardware that now can use newer games as well because obviously the switch hasn't been updated apart from the hardware pieces since 2017 Mm. so yeah that's how yuzu works yuzu didn't do anything illegal they just exploited something that was in the hardware already that's Mm. they're not doing anything illegal themselves yuzu isn't providing these roms they're not pirating copies they're just using Nintendo's hardware against them a little bit, and that's why I think Nintendo is so angry. Yeah, that, I mean, I've got a quote here from an article on Ars Technica um, that says um, that digital media specialist John Loiterman uh, is quoted as saying, Nintendo is basically taking the position that emulation itself is unlawful. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, he's a foundation law attorney and digital media specialist, um, which is not strictly true. I think that's what he says later in the article. It's not, emulation is not illegal in and of itself. It, the, the issue arises when people are using it to play pirated games. That's not necessarily the fault of the person providing the emulator. But then also, I think in, in a sense, Nintendo has some kind of case here when they're saying, look, all right, it's not it's not your fault, but people were literally playing Tears of the Kingdom before it came out. Mm. Like something is wrong there. That is not people using games that they own that they have uh, you know turned into you can like mount 
ROMs or I don't know what the terminology is, but you know, the when we emulate stuff for worst games ever, for example, it's games that you guys have sent us, and therefore it's legal for us to play an emulated version of them. Um, but you know, with a Switch, I think it's difficult because it's sort of its current hardware games are still being released for it. I feel in terms of just morals and ethics, I feel better about emulating stuff that is no longer supported, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a way of um, preserving this this media. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think it, it would be wrong. For, I mean, you know, uh, Nexi asks, well, uh, what do you think the ramifications and consequences will be for this? I certainly hope they are focused entirely on this case and other companies don't start deciding, oh, yeah, we should go after emulation as well. And I don't think they will do. I think Nintendo is particularly litigious and that is what's going on here and it's current hardware that we're talking about. Um, but, yeah, I would certainly hope that this will not be followed up by people going after other emulators for, yeah. uh, for consoles and games that no longer exist or are no longer supported. I mean, they've done this before. They mm -hmm. tried to go for Dolphin emulator, which is the Wii and DS game. Yeah, it might just be Cube. Wii and GameCube. GameCube. It's yeah. Wii and yeah. GameCube um, emulator, which was at one point going to be on Steam. Nintendo tried to do this to them and they failed the lawsuit, but they managed to get it deplatformed off Steam. So now you can only get it online. Um, and they they have kind of got a reputation of like just trying it to see if they can. And I think maybe that if like, the only thing that they could potentially get Yuzu on here is that they have the decryption key for the the encryptions that stop games being pirated as part of their software. That's the only thing where they're kind of they have the the legal right. They can't be like, uh, well, people played our game on your thing because you'd be like, well, people played your game on a computer. Are you going to sue every computer manufacturer, Nintendo, or what? Yeah, um, the the person who's breaking the law there is the ROM provider site. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this isn't the first time Nintendo have done this. This is this won't be the first time they lose it if they do lose this lawsuit. Um, I just think the issue with Nintendo is that they constantly make themselves look ridiculous when it comes to the lawsuits and the legal things they do. Like when they tried to copyright strike content of theirs and basically ended up having like having all of their own videos yeah. taken down mm -hmm. like the nintendo laws like their law team they're crazy they just like <laughs> they have apps they will take absolutely no prisoners and they will just go for anyone and everyone this i understand because obviously you know they their game got leaked and was played by a million people not that this game then failed. Mm. Uh, don't know if you guys have heard about tears of the kingdom real low-key indie title mm. that no one played um but like I understand why they're doing this, but twenty percent of their of those one million downloads isn't necessarily that many to prove that Yuzu was the main issue with this. I think that Yuzu are just an easy target because they are one of the most prolific Switch emulators out there. Mm -hmm. I think there's nothing wrong with an emulator. I think that there's lots of games we can play now because of emulators. And if Nintendo do sue Yuzu and get away with it and then it sparks a follow-on of other people taking down other emulators. I think that will be a shame for um, game preservation because a lot of ROMs are the only ways you can play some games now. Um, and I also think it would be a shame for just retro gamers in general because people who like retro games love to use an emulator because it's an easy, convenient, and um, kind of handy way to play a lot of those yeah. games. It's academic though because I think... Like, it's not going to happen with, with older stuff. But yeah, I too would be very frustrated yeah. if it did. But yeah. I'm sure it probably won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm basically echoing the same points you guys are making. I understand why they're doing it. A million downloads of Tears of the Kingdom before it comes out. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot, massive alarm bells. Um, but yeah, it's it's not illegal to make emulation software. If this does go through and Nintendo have a lot more money than Yuzu do then it does set a very dangerous precedent for uh, game preservation. Uh, you know, a lot of people use, as you guys have said, emulation software to play things that are no longer commercially available. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. I don't see any issue with that whatsoever. I personally wouldn't emulate a Switch game necessarily. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would 
I wouldn't be as okay with that. But certainly, you know, older stuff, absolutely. Sometimes it's the only way you can play these games if, if you know, they had a limited run or they cost thousands of dollars on the secondhand market. You know, mm-hmm. some of these things just aren't available. Old consoles die. If, if this does go through, you would like to think that it, it won't go any further with other companies. But Nintendo are now starting to release some of their older stuff as part of Switch Online. Yeah. yeah. So this could be used in the court of law as a legal precedent to say, well, any SNES, NES, uh, GBC, GB, GBA, DS, 3DS, Wii U, Wii emulators. I know they tried with the Wii and the GameCube already, but uh, they could quite easily go after all of those, and that would be such a massive blow to that industry. I'd like to think others wouldn't because it's not worth their time. And Mm. as you said, makes them look a bit foolish, Mm. especially seeing as Sony just straight up ripped the PCXE or whatever it's called emulator and stuffed it in their PlayStation 1 mini Mm -hmm. console, uh, which is why it didn't really work because they didn't change any of the settings Mm -hmm. properly. Awful. So hopefully this doesn't go anywhere. If anything, I think this is just drawing more people's attention to this emulator. Mm, yeah, I've really heard I'd it. never heard of it. I either. knew people could emulate Switch games, and even if you didn't know that, you'd probably assume that there was something in place, even if it's pretty basic. But I certainly didn't know the name of the emulator before now, mm. and now I do. Yeah. And I imagine a lot of other people will go, oh, I can actually play Switch games on my PC yeah. quite conveniently and for free and also it'll run better mm-hmm. yeah. in in like 60 fr- yeah I've, I'm I didn't know about this before cheers Nintendo for letting me know I wonder how much and how many extra patrons they'll get yeah <laughs> but quite frankly the clever clever clogs that they are they deserve it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it's 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 hard work I don't know how to do it make some money while you're at it yeah. I'm, I'm, Hold no grudge against those guys. the legal fees anyway. Exactly. They might see a huge surge in support just for that alone. Yeah. Well, it's time for something a little bit odd. A little bit peculiar, but current. Mm, Very current. In the news, in fact. It's weird news. It's weird news time. Time for some weird video game news. Remember, you can submit weird video game news to us on the relevant social media platform when the post goes out on a Tuesday. Tuesday. However, if you'd like to guarantee a shout out at this point in the podcast, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump supporters at the appropriate tier and become a podcast producer just like Chip Thompson's Thumbs, G.Y. Goliath, Nexus Polaris, Nicole Hansen, Kyle Gary, Andy Scott, Blake Thomas, Lockie Morris, Shaman Nomo, Great Giggity, Meldy Elbon A, Katie Garrett, Gabrielle Philippink, Potato Under underscore Shaq 99 Eric Sue and Big Money Bobby Vegas <laughs> Sick Thank you podcast producers Thank, Thank you, you podcast, producers. podcast producers Got some weird news there Peter Got some weird news that was sent to us on Twitter via Twitter Good. from Lloyd Williams <laughs> at Lloyd W90 It's kotaku.com and it's written by Zach Zweisen or Zweisen. We will never know Doom is now playable on a t- Oh now I have to accept cookies Doom is now playable. <laughs> What's it playable on? Now playable yeah. on a $2,000 plus lawnmower. Beca- oh. Because why not? Okay. Finally, you can mow down zombies, demons, and monsters with an actual lawn space mower. I know that this is a meme, but I'm kind of sick of it. Yeah. Because it's not running on the lawnmower. Is, is it, it not? Ru- is this one not running? I on don't the know. I've not read this, this yet. This one might actually run. I on doubt the it. Probably not, but we'll see. Once again, it's time to open up the massive and ancient tome titled Things You Can Play Doom On and update it. Now, thanks to the magic of the future, you can play id's classic 90s FPS on a robo lawnmower, just as John Carmack intended, probably. Last week, landscaping tech company Hus... Husqvarna announced that the classic shooter featuring a lone space marine fighting off waves of demons with a shotgun and chainsaw will be able to run on some of its fancier robotic lawnmowers. This isn't fan ma- uh, this isn't a fan-made hack or weird unlicensed port either. This is an official partnership with Bethesda, owners of id Software, to bring the original 1993 Doom to Husqvarna Robo mowers. Well, okay, so it probably me proved wrong. it probably will be running then. Yeah. This new way to play Doom arrives in April on all nearer robotic lawnmower models. You don't have to pay for the game either, just the $2,000 plus lawnmower. Instead, simply download it and play the shooter via the Robo Mower's built in screen. To rotate what your... is a Robo Mower? Is it, do you start to walk it around your garden or does it, uh, does it do it for you? There's a picture of a man 
with a ride on mower, but that's probably not it. That's a stock, that's a stock image. image. That's a stock yeah. image, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, there might be a picture later on. Uh, to rotate your view, you turn the knob. And to shoot the demons, you press it down. You hold the start button to move forward. Oh, is that just the end of the article? It just ends abruptly. Oh. Oh, no, continue reading. Hidden between three ads. Um, it's a little robot boy. Oh. It's like a rumba. How are you supposed to play that? I supposed to play something on that? Don't know. Okay. Hmm. I did wonder if it was like a grass rumba. Mm. I knew someone with one of those. They called it Mo Farah. That's Very good. good. That's good enough. A few caveats to mention. First, this isn't available in the US. Why? I don't know. Perhaps we can't be trusted with video games on lawnmowers. Secondly, this isn't all of Doom. Instead, it's just the first episode, Knee Deep in the Dead, which is arguably the most famous one, sure, but just keep in mind you won't be able to play the rest of the beloved shooter in the middle of your backyard on a tiny LCD screen. Sorry. Sadly, this won't be a permanent feature that you can show off to family and friends for years to come. Instead, Doom and all its demons and guns will be removed from lawnmowers on September 9th. So enjoy it while you can. I mean, it's just, you know, it's obviously just a big publicity stunt. Yeah. yeah. Someone at the lawnmower company heard, oh, there's this meme, this meme where people play Doom on stuff. Let's contact Bethesda. Mm. Bethesda were like, well, if you want it, a full, a, a lifetime license, it's going to cost you this much. And he said, oh, can we just have it for a month, please? Like and months. one level. Yeah. And they, they said, yes. We'll make six headlines. Yeah. And, that'll, and no one will buy the lawnmower. No. And that'll be it. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. It looked like there was more, but I don't think we need to know anything Damn it. further. No. Well, from one piece of useless technology to another. Mm. I have some news. It was sent in by Amy Wicks and James Matthews, no Wicks. relation, Wicks. on Facebook. And uh, at CT Thumbs on Twitter. This comes from IGN by Taylor Lyles. Game Scent is a new AI device that lets you smell game worlds whilst playing. No, thank you. Play it, smell it. Fully immerse yourself. Mm, play it, smell it. <laughs> if smell you've ever word. wanted to fully immerse yourself in a game to the point where you can smell things that appear on screen, I have just the product for you. Game Scent is a new product that uses AI to release a scent that correlates the gameplay on your display. In a press release, the company says that its patent-pending adapter allows a device to use real-time audio cues to dispense a scent, like the smell of rain during a storm or gunfire in a first-person shooter. But if it's just working, what if it gets confused and it's just like, fart, fart, <laughs> fart, <laughs> yeah. fart, you're on fart world, these are fart yeah. Why does it need to be AI? Why can't they just build in, build in a bit of software where that says, if start raining in game, release rain smell. I don't understand well, what, what AI they, that is That probably required. is what it is, but they put the word AI yeah, on it so well, that it's AI bros really AI, will buy is it. it. Yeah. Um, as you can see in the gallery above, you can't, but this is what it looks like. Okay, it's an octagon. Mm -hmm. An octagon with some like little octagon. scent burst. Vents no, on the top. I, I think it's, it's got six sides. Six sides. Hexagon. Hex hexagon. Yeah. Um, game Scent is a small portable box a small, sorry, a small box compatible with PCs, consoles, and VR headsets as the device can plug into either an HDMI or a three... There's a bird, There's a in, bird the in the bed. There's a bird in the bed. 3.5 millimeter audio jack. The device uses swappable cartridges to keep the sensory adventure going, according to the company, but there is a clean air neutralizer that removes scents after a gaming session so you don't have to worry about the smell of a smoky explosion in your house hours after you finish playing. Great. It costs it? $149.99. That's not that much. It's currently on sale. Normally it costs $179.99. Right, but there's only going to be a few different smells. Well, I'll tell you what they are. Okay. Studies have shown that the sense of smell imprints in long-term memory more strongly than anything else, GameScent president Casey Bunce wrote in the press release. With GameScent, we're hoping to elevate gamers' experiences to be more exciting and memorable than they have ever been before. Out of the box, GameScent includes six scents. What do, you think what do you think there would be? Fart. Okay, fart's not one. Smoke enough. explosion. Smoky explosion. Yeah. Rain. Flush. Um, no rain. Oh so, uh, yeah, kind of blood. No, oh. uh, it's a gunfire <laughs> explosion. Don't know how different they would smell. Mm. Racing. What you can I smell love burnt the smell tires. Of racing. Um, clean air, which is the cleaning one. Just air, isn't it? Um, storm, probably rain. Okay. And forest. Right. Some, I bet they smell horrible. Yeah, yeah. some additional scents will be available for purchase in the future. A few upcoming scents include sports arena, gross, oh, uh, blood, 
Oh, gross. Fart. And fresh cut grass. Oh, for God's sake. And fart. No, just kidding. DLC wild. smells. God. Yeah. And if you happen to be attending PAX East next month, no. you can demo the product at the booth. Right. All you'll smell is convention room hot dog. Yeah. That's, you and then they're like, to... that smells like sports arena. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. We won't be at PAX East, but we will be at Insomnia at the end of this month. Yeah. If you're going, say hello to us. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is just silly. And in the midst of all the layoffs, mm. Jeff Keighley tweeted about that thing. Yeah. Clearly doing like a Sponsored. paid tweet. Yeah. But everyone was like, wow, Jeff, read the room. But yeah. Smell the room. Wake up smell, and smell, smell the Smell the room, Jeff. Jeff. What a... No, wake up, wake up and smell the blood, what Jeff. A dingus. Yeah. yeah. That's my news. My weird news comes from me. Oh, yeah? And it's via Kotaku and Zack Zweizen. He's back. Mm. He's so busy. Some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth discs are misprinted and could cause problems. <sighs> Uh-oh. Whoops. <laughs> Due to a manufacturing error, physical editions of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in Japan contain discs that are misprinted. This could cause problems for folks trying to play the highly anticipated Square Enix RPG as they will likely end up inserting the wrong disc into their console. On February the 28th, as first reported by Gamatsu, Square Enix published a warning on the official Final Fantasy VII Rebirth website about a misprint involving the two game discs in the physical edition. Normally, players would first insert the data disc into their PS5 and install the game. Then they would insert the play disc and play the long-awaited follow-up to Square Enix. <laughs> However, the publisher explained that due to a defect in the manufacturing process at Sony, the disc labels got swapped around and are incorrect. Oh dear. But do you know what? how long that issue will last? When someone puts the play disc in and it says, please insert the other disc. Yeah. And then they'll insert the other disc and then it'll work. But it might say... No, we're like, good for you. If someone puts the play disc in... And it said, no, if someone puts the data disc in first, thinking data disc first, mm. and then it says, incorrect, please insert data disc. Like if it specifies, mm. then they might just think, oh, my data disc is broken and yeah. start contact. You know, they might not, some people might not try the other mm. disc. Yeah. Square Enix apologized for the error and misprinted discs, which seem to only be incorrect in Japan and Asia. To get around the misprint, you'll have to insert the play disc first, Crazy. install the game, and then use the data disc to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth moving Thanks, forward. Zach. According to Square Enix, if you do this, you'll be able to play the massive RPG without any problems. Okay. The drama. The <laughs> drama around two discs that say the wrong word. Additional paragraph from Zach here. Oh, yeah. The digital version of the Final Fantasy VII, Re of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth isn't affected by the issue because, Don't piss you know, me off, there, Zach. Are no there aren't any discs, discs to swap. Zach's like, oh, I need another 50 words. Yeah. This is, they have put out in multiple Asian languages, though, this graphic, which is. This is not the this is not the disc it's it should be. <laughs> Put the other disc in. This disc is the play disc. But surely it can't be affecting all of the copies because they've said like some so surely like someone is going to see that and be like right I've got to put the other disc in first <laughs> and then it's going to be the wrong disc because mm. it's going to be correctly printed. I don't know. Oh, chaos. It's a disaster. A Rash comedy of chaos errors. Really hard. Right now. From what it sounds wow. like, inserting the wrong disc won't destroy your console or ruin anything permanently. Yeah, but of course not. It means that many... To me, of course it. not, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course not, it won't. <laughs> but it means that many players will likely be confused as to why the game isn't properly installed after they insert the data disc. Hopefully, Square Enix's warning and coverage of it will help anyone affected by this misprint learn how to fix the situation. Well, it's not going to help everyone. I got respect. Meanwhile, the drama. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is receiving rave reviews, with many critics praising the large sequel's open world and abundant mini games. In our review of the RPG, Here's Claire Jackson explained that while this sequel is sure to be more divisive, <laughs> Zach's divisive. He's got another two paragraphs out of it somehow. You're, you're Zach pissing me off. <laughs> Should we move on to the big discussion, guys? Uh, yeah, yeah all right. I think we should. It's big discussion time. Time for the big video game discussion that this week comes courtesy of Blake Thomas, who says, Hey, Bap. Hi. Hey. The layoffs just keep coming with a new announcement from Sony. The company is laying off 900 employees and possibly closing down their London studio. When even Sony is laying off such a large amount of employees, do you think we will see more cuts this year from the quadruple A gaming industry as a whole? Who would like to say yes first? Yes. Yes. We already have. Yep. Yeah, since this question was asked, EA... Is have done the same. And we will Deck Nine. We'll yeah. get to we'll get to EA in a minute, but I'll read the original story first. This is from VGC. 
Uh, and earlier this week, this morning, Sony revealed that it is adding to the ever-growing pile of industry layoffs. In official posts, the company announced it had initiated a reduction in workforce. These cuts will impact a variety of PlayStation's first-party studios, including Insomniac Games, Guerrilla, Naughty Dog, Fire Sprite, and more, with the biggest cut hitting PlayStation's London studio, which is being closed down in its entirety. At the moment, I think it's being proposed. Uh, one thing we right. did learn from this is the the difference in labor laws between different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, American employees are being laid off immediately. Uh, they may get severance and stuff, but they're done. Um, the UK layoffs, it's being proposed before that, that that's allowed to happen, has to be approved. And Japan, I think they're getting some sort of like, uh, uh, like course training help to help them find another job mm -hmm. somewhere else. So problem is there are so many people now no. looking for We're work. All the same so, skill set. So yeah. many people. Uh, buh, buh, buh. In total, Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, estimates that the layoffs will affect around 900 people, or 8% of the current workforce, and multiple games are being cancelled as a result. We had to step back, look at our business holistically, and move forward focusing on the long-term sustainability of the company and delivering the best experiences possible for our community, wrote Ryan in an email. Don't piss me off, Jim Ryan. In an email shared with Sony employees and posted on, on the Sony Interactive Entertainment website. The goal is to streamline our resor resources to ensure our continued success and ability to deliver experiences gamers and creators have come to expect from us. Studios across the US and UK will be impacted, and London Studio, which uh, has developed PSVR titles like 2019's Blood and Truth, which was excellent, and was currently working on a multiplayer title set in, fan set in a fan fantasy London, sorry, is being shuttered. On Twitter, London Studio Associate Art Manager Izzy Foley posted about the closure. I have nothing to say, I am in tears. Another recent tweet from Hit Points by Nathan Brown calls attention to the fact that just a few days ago, Jim Ryan attended a gathering at London Studio yeah. celebrating his impending retirement. There was Presumably, a photo of him with them. He was aware. He said, you're all coming with me. This is our retirement He was party. aware about the closure at that point. They posted a photo of them all together and their caption, it was from like their official account, I think, mm. and it said, farewell, Jim Ryan. And yeah. it's like, yeah, goodbye to you. I think he just it, wanted to throw everyone a party. He was like, this is a party for all of us. Yes. Mm. You just don't know why yet. Yeah, Wait you'll, a week find, out and you'll soon. find out soon. We looked at our studios and our portfolio, evaluating projects in various stages of development and have decided that some of those projects will not move forward, wrote PlayStation Studios chief Herman Holst in another blog post. This round of layoffs adds to the over 6,000 layoffs the industry has already experienced in 2024 across studios, big and small. Uh, one of the uh, casualties, apart from all of the job losses, obviously, which is awful, is that apparently a live service Twisted Metal game was in development at Fire Sprite. That has been cancelled. Um, I'm going to continue now with more bad news from, at the time of recording, yesterday? Yeah. Or yeah. is it today? I yesterday. think it was like last night. Yeah, Wednesday, late yesterday. Wednesday. This is from Eurogamer. Following its decision to cut 6% of its workforce last March, EA has announced another round of layoffs, this time affecting 5% of staff, around 670 employees, as it moves away from future licensed IP towards its own IP, owned IP, sorry, sports and massive online communities. Ugh. In an email to staff announcing today's layoffs, EA CEO uh, Andrew Wilson said the cuts were part of a continuing effort to optimize our global real estate footprint Oh. to best support our business. In uh, order to achieve its goals, Wilson said EA will be streamlining its company operations, sunsetting games and moving away from development of future licensed IP that we do not believe will be successful in our changing industry. Additionally, it'll double down on our biggest opportunities, including our owned IP, sports and massive online communities. Notably, while Wilson and EA may be looking to move away from licensed IP in the future, the publisher has previously confirmed it, it confirmed it had it has sorry five high-profile licensed games in the work, two based on Marvel properties, Black Panther and Iron Man, and three Star Wars titles. An EA representative has told Games in, GamesIndustry.biz that the two Marvel projects remain in development. However, in a separate note to EA employees, Laura Miel, I think, president of EA Entertainment and Technology, revealed the company's strategic shift has re resulted in the cancellation of Respawn Entertainment's Star Wars FPS, reportedly a Mandalorian title. Mm -hmm. Additionally, Miel announced EA will be winding down Ridgeline Games, whose single-player Battlefield game will now be handled by Criterion. Ridgeline's founder, Halo co-creator Marcus Leto, I think, recently confirmed his departure from the Seattle-based developer. In a little under two months, over 7,500 workers have lost their jobs compared to the already substantial 9,000 layoffs seen across the entirety of 2023. 
I just, I'm gonna get this way now. Um, that wasn't a word. I'm gonna get this out of the way now. Um, I think Sony are real scummy about this. Mm -hmm. I think that they have seen successful game after successful game mm -hmm. after successful game. They talk about how they're doing so well. They talk about how they've got record profits. We talk. We see them talking on their shareholder meetings about how the, the PlayStation 5 is the best console out there and they are making more money than they have ever made before. Why the flip are 900 people now out of the job? That's not because you haven't got the money to support those people. That's because you want to make more money off less people. That's because you want to lean into letting computers do more of their jobs so you're not going to worry about having actual people in your team. This has really pissed me off mm -hmm. um, from Sony. And we've talked about an uh, Xbox and we almost forgave them a little bit because they were a merger of two huge companies and a lot of the teams that were let go were teams that were kind of duplicate teams like your HR department, et cetera, et cetera. They weren't the only ones. They were just the majority of them. But this, this is disgraceful from Sony. They're just doing it because they know they can because everyone else has gotten away with it. So they're doing it. I don't believe that they needed to do this. I believe they chose to do this. Jim Ryan could have taken a bit less on his pension fund and maybe the 900 people would still have more, still have a job. He talks about people like they are just simply assets to get rid of. He doesn't speak about them as people in the statements he makes. And that is what is also annoying. He talks about streamlining. He doesn't say, sorry that 900 people lost their jobs and their livelihoods, but we just want to just streamline our business. That pisses me off. And I think that this has really put a sour taste in my mouth when it comes to PlayStation and Sony at the moment, because scummy is what they are. They're greedy, greedy scumbags. Well, I have two sort of different angles that relate to that. One is um, the quote that went out by Embracer Group not so long ago. Uh, mm -hmm. This was a quote tweeted by game developer and various other people. Embracer says, it's looking out for its shareholders after cutting almost 1,400 jobs. Quote, our overruling principle is to always maximize shareholder value in any mm. given situation. So that very much feeds into that narrative of like oh we care more about shareholders and uh you know we treat our stuff like commodities rather than human beings um but i also did a quick google um as to you know what really is causing these these layoffs in in at least some situations whether or not it's mm -hmm. applicable to sony uh, and i found an article by the guardian um, and here's a little excerpt from it. Colin McDonald is a veteran game developer and now director of Games Jobs Live, an industry recruitment platform. He sees a combination of three key factors behind many of the job losses. Revenue projection corrections, raised interest rates, and high inflation. And he said... These three themselves are linked. While many of the revenue projection corrections came from the delayed realization that the COVID bubble was just a bubble, recent inflation levels have outstripped industry growth and pushed costs up, as well as forcing interest rate increases, which put pressure on everyone accustomed to the financing available when more traditional forms of investment weren't providing good returns. So that is certainly, that explains why at least some of these studios are doing their layoffs. They're looking at their projections. They're saying, yeah, we were working with the sort of the post-COVID numbers and, and that level of success. And uh, going forward, it looks like that's not going to be applicable in, in a year or two. Um, but whether it applies to Sony, I don't know. And when you have big companies like Embracer who are saying, we just want to look after our shareholders more than anyone else, that does kind of boil your blood. Because, you know, the, the devil's advocate approach is to say, well, we could continue to, uh, you know, we could restructure our, our finances so that we can keep these 900 people mm -hmm. in jobs, for example, and we would be, you know, perhaps not making as much as we used to. And we're a business. And of course, we're trying to make profit. That's how we operate. And there's, that's very much, that's a devil's advocate kind of perspective. But then you do just think, well, how big are these dividends and bonuses and and what is the cost versus reward for an individual shareholder you'd think like as a human being you might you'd like to think that someone would say look if i take a little bit less home then we can just keep this studio open yeah. and it might not make quote unquote the best business sense to keep that you know that department or whatever open but we're going to do that 
anyway and we're going to take less but that's just not how yeah. these people operate unfortunately there's a great write-up about sort of the state and uh issues with playstation at the moment by uh, sammy barker from push square and there was a bit in it that was that was also illuminating very similar to what your man said just mm. there uh, and i'll quote some now the division's big problem is that it's spending almost as much as it as it's making in its most recent financial report it registered record-breaking revenue of 10.2 billion dollars only to turn a profit profit of just $608 million. The optimistic viewpoint here is that it's a profitable business overall, but with margins as razor thin as this, when speaking in terms of billions, mm. um, the firm is effectively one misstep away from plunging itself into the red, and that's not healthy. And we also learned recently that uh, Hoyoverse, who published Honky Star Rail and, the, Genshin, and Genshin Impact, yeah. actually made more money in terms of profit than PlayStation did. Mm -hmm. They brought in about $2 billion of pure profit and PlayStation having made 10 billion, nearly 11 billion, only made $600 million in profit. Mm -hmm. Now that is no excuse for laying just mass layoffs across the board. There are reasons for it, of course. The human cost here is awful mm -hmm. and our hearts go out to everyone who is affected and we hope that you, you land on your feet as soon as possible. Um, it, it's been very uh, heartening to see sort of developers and studios reach out and that Larian is hiring for a Tell few tale. roles. Etc. Um, but there's only so many. There's jobs. only so so many jobs to go so around. Traveller's Tales, not Telltale. Yeah, t I think t Deck Nine are also struggling. Deck Nine um, have just let go of like, I think was it like six, sixty, maybe more employees, mm -hmm. and then they sent an email being like, "We're going to help you, you know, find a job." And then I saw a Deck Nine employee be like, "Yeah, they said that," and they kicked us out of our company email like uh, twenty minutes later. So mm -hmm. it's um. It, it's awful. It really is awful. There, I mean, we. I'm tired of having this conversation because not only do we have to keep having it over and over again, yeah. but it means that there is a real problem here mm -hmm. and things aren't being fixed. I think all these companies, apart from maybe Embracer, uh, that are laying people off will probably be okay. Mm. And, you know, some people have, have laid off the amount of people that they need to in order to survive. But other companies like EA and PlayStation and Microsoft, they're just streamlining. Mm -hmm. They're just streamlining things. Yeah. And unfortunately, again, that article from Push Square talks about, as we all know, that PlayStation have really banked their first party business on massively budgeted single player games. And Spider-Man 2 cost, what, like $300 million to make, which is unreal. Mm -hmm. It made a profit, but it's not making as much profit as something that would not have cost nearly as much as that. So they need to yeah. make again we've spoken about it before they need to make smaller games they need to as much as we love these huge blockbusters like spider-man 2 like the last of us like horizon we need smaller at least smaller interstitial games like miles morales mm. games that recycle assets and reuse you know locations and things like that like that's if this is how we continue to get good narrative single player games but it doesn't result in building a business that does not make nearly as much money as clearly they want it to, which results in 600, 800 people getting laid off, then that's what needs to happen. Just as long as we don't, as long as we don't keep laying people off and then settle into what EA want to do, yeah. which oh. is serving the, the massive, the massive online communities, which sounds like actual hell, mm -hmm. but especially from EA, because you know that that's just going to be a microtransaction uh, nightmare, mm. you know, with, with all these different currencies and battle passes. I d that is the worst possible scenario for us to end up in here where all these people lose their jobs and all these big companies, their only viable option to maximize profit for shareholders is to take a gamble on a live service platform that time and time again does not work because yeah. people do not want it or they only have time for one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's Fortnite or that's Apex or, you know, whatever. I just, it's, this is so tiresome and it's so awful. And this year, will it get worse? I don't know who else could actually do major no. level. Ubisoft could close a load of studios, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, I think they ha have closed one, did they, at the end of last year? One of their... It might have been that was one. It Montreal. That, no, not Montreal. It Montreal. might have been that one that like did a really bad job of something. Was it like it? Have they got one in India or something I that I think did Mumbai a, did a uh, Mumbai worked yeah. on. They were doing their Prince of Persia game for a while and then they was taken off them. I don't know if they were. I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll can't remember. I think what's really hard about this is the fact that like it used to be that if a studio made a bad game, hmm. 
they were uh, they were punished with the fact that they they hadn't made the money from it and their company would suffer and their employees would suffer not that they should be punished for their job but whatever um and now companies can make amazing games that are like renowned across the globe as like one of the best games that have come out this year it can win awards it can be highly regarded devs can do a brilliant job and still get sacked mm -hmm. like you look at yeah. insomnia insomniac sorry who have literally have not failed one game no. in the last like i'd say 10 years they haven't had a stinker and they're still having to make sacrifices of people being sacked from their offices mm -hmm. gorilla obviously horizon has been out shone by the other games coming out around it but it's still done well yeah. and it is objectively two brilliant games that they've made and they're still having to let people go naughty dog made the last of us one of the biggest like names in games for the last 10 years they're still having to let people go devs are not safe right now and there is absolutely no way if i was a 20 year old or going into university no matter how much I wanted mm. to make games, mm. I would not even begin to bother because no. I there's just so many jobs out there that are being let go and there is absolute no stability, no respect for my job and no guarantee that I'd even have a job come six months after I started. Mm -hmm. So um, In 2023, November, Ubisoft laid off 124 employees to, quote, streamline our operations and enhance our collective efficiency. Um, 98 of them were from uh, their Canadian branch um mm. yeah it wasn't mumbai but okay. yeah yeah it's it's awful and um it's i can't remember which of his books it was but one of jason schreier's books it might be blood sweat and pixels uh, we already knew that it was really hard to work in the games industry anyway mm -hmm. from crunch to harassment to hostile workplaces you know to, to all all that stuff and, and then the job security as well you know temp work and moving all the way across the world because these studios have money and they will relocate you mm -hmm. if they want you to work for them it you know it it, it happens uh, that book painted such a grim picture of working in the games industry because it was just like I moved my entire family halfway across the world and then was let go a week later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens all the time in the games industry. There are other industries that maybe are volatile, but like that level of volatility is unbelievable. The system is broken. I don't know how it gets fixed, but I don't know how much longer this can keep happening. Mm. You know, I, I just don't know what new approach to making games there needs to be for these big companies to be satisfied and to tick along and just, I, but that's the problem. I was going to say to just get on with it, but I don't think the problem now is that no companies want to get on with it. Yeah. They want to make all the money yeah. or nor none at all. It well, feels yeah. kind of counterintuitive as well, because I think since sort of the tail end of last year, there's been people saying like, you know, another video game crash is effectively happening or, or on its way. And in making all these layoffs, you're right, Ben, I think a lot of these companies will be okay. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's from their point of view, from these, these big companies, they think if we make these layoffs, then that will mitigate any negative stuff that might happen to us in the future. But I think from the consumer side of it, it feels like the opposite, opposite way around. It's like these decisions that you're making are as far as I'm concerned, making the 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 outlook seem a lot worse, but putting aside the human cost, you know, the these like massive multiplayer communities and and canceling all of these like really interesting sounding single player projects, you know, like on, on a personal level from my likes and dislikes, and I think we all share them, it sounds like <laughs> the the game sort of release schedule for the next five years mm -hmm sounds a lot worse than it was. Whereas mm. the corporations are thinking, we'll do these layoffs, we'll make these changes to our slate and things are going to be better. And we're going to avoid a big, horrible crash. But yeah. It's like a weird inverse crash though. Because I think, I mean, I can't pretend to be an expert, but the, mm. the, the, the E.T. crash of the early 80s, that was because people stopped buying games. Yeah. Because people were like, these are crap. That's you the keep, thing. There's too many and it's crap. The problem now people is that- will do that people will do that well that's the thing sales aren't going down no. like like the the audience is there to play games it's like happening on the on the inside of the industry like the crash is happening internally rather than externally like yeah. people are still queuing up to buy games in their 
billions. Mm. Like industry revenue is still absurdly high. It's just on the other side, they're, they're spending like, spending ah, too much. We're spending too much money so no one can have a job. Yeah. And then we're not going to make any games or we'll mm -hmm. make games slower or make games that people won't want. And that may lead to a crash well, yeah. Yeah. if they just release loads of free to play bollocks that no one wants. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's just such a flip show, isn't they it? They must have stats though like marketing stats that say this really is the way to go like i can't i can't imagine there are people on the inside paid six figure salaries yeah saying this is what we need to do we need to start investing in live service and and having data in front of them that like, they they must have something to back that up even though we're sitting yeah, here saying it, i don't know because you get like the corporate bigwigs in every industry mm. who will come in and they'll be like the kids love yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. We're making that. This is why I'm concerned about this new guy that's coming in for Sony in yeah. the interim. Mm -hmm. uh, what was his name? T -t -t something. Uh, T -t Totoki? I can't remember. Hiroki Totoki. Yes, he's, he's got, got a great a, name. He's got a brilliant name. Yeah, Hiroki Totoki, I'm kind of concerned because he is a suit. He's not. A, he's not. He's not a games he's man. Not a yeah. He doesn't like games. Although you could argue Jim Ryan isn't either, even though he has been in PlayStation for so many decades. Uh, but Totoki is a is a suit, and he will cut things down to the mm -hmm. ground. And I wonder if this is even Jim's call. I wonder if mm -hmm. it's the last thing that Jim had to do on his way out the door. Which, if true. That sucks, Jim. That really sucks. But you are the scapegoat here, so screw you. Mm -hmm. um, but like. I wouldn't be surprised if PlayStation undergoes some fundamental changes yeah. beyond beyond cutting jobs. Like just their compl their output completely changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like I say, it's just greed. It's not like in my mind, none of these statements from any of these companies has been like uh, the company is struggling and we need to make some cuts. Um, and you know, this is what we're going to do in order to keep afloat. This is what we've got to do. This to me is we're trimming the fat because we can and we can make more money and we don't have to pay these people. So we're going to get rid of these people, make these people work harder. And we, Billy, big bucks. I was going to say the other word, but chose not big to. Big money Bobby Vegas. Big money Bobby Vegas is just going to reap the rewards and add an extra zero to their, their bonuses at the end of the year. Yeah. And that's what pisses me off is that it's just... It's just shareholders and CEOs and the corporate bigwigs who are benefiting from this. Everyone else is losing. Every gamer loses when you cut out an entire genre of games because you think that it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Everyone's losing here. No one is winning apart from the people who are already millionaires. Yeah. So Support that's the indie devs. thing about it. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Because yeah. that's probably where a lot of these people are going to end up yeah. starting their own thing yeah. and all the power to them if 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 they go that route and i hope it works Absolutely. out for you but uh yeah another brilliant uh big discussion yeah feels just, good, uh, doesn't it? just two months into the year so we'll see what happens next week yeah. um because it, it's it's very much a sort of when it's raining it's pouring sort of thing yeah. i feel like Who's all it next? took was one person to do it and then the dam burst and everyone thought well if we if we have to wait Mm. then, you know, we're going to stick out as yeah. as yeah. like, an, a, you know, oh, these guys are the... But if you announce it alongside everybody else, mm. then... So maybe things will slow down or stop, but I Didn't don't know. did Supermassive also let people go this yeah, week? Yeah, they did, yeah. Mm. Supermassive did, yeah. which is awful because Jesus. they make the best games. They make the best We games. love those. They do. Well... Make sure you let us know what you thought of everything we discussed this week. You can find us in a number of places around the internet. Peter's going to tell you about a couple of them right now. YouTube.com and Twitch.tv, both forward slash Team Triple Jump. All of our videos on YouTube and almost all of our streams on Twitch. And if you've got Amazon Prime, you are paying for a bundle of lots of different things, including a Twitch sub. So you can redeem that on our channel. You'll be uh, like, a, like a normal subscriber at no extra cost to yourself. Mm. We are on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, on all of which we are at Team Triple Jump. So come say hi, connect with us. And if you want to go to our Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash uh, Team Triple Jump to join our Patreon. Yes, triplejo.mup is our website. That's where you can find links to everything we do. If you want a cameo for us, from us, etc. want to leave a five-star review on your platform of choice. It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. You can buy merch there too. Uh, what's on that? Website. On our website. Yeah, triplejumpshop.com. Go get our amazing new merch available right now. Uh, five star review on your platform of choice. It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms and we'd really appreciate it. Uh, Ashton, will you tell us the sponsor again? Oh, God. Yes. Actually, do you have to? I don't have to, but I will. This week's sponsor is Final Fantasy VII Afterbirth. 
Chew it up and it'll give you Ooh. vitamins. <laughs> Chew it up. All right. Well, we'll see you next time, everybody. Look after yourselves. Bye. Bye.